Hey everyone, it's me. I haven't uh, done any of my readings for a while because I was working on my uh, King Lear in Quarantine project. Uh, you can look for the link for that on the Decemberists. And also you remember I could not master Facebook Live on the computer and the phone was making it sound like I was down a well. So I'm now doing these via Zoom. The sound seems to be awesome. And I had the great good fortune a couple of days ago of finding a collection of female monologues from the 80s. A lot of it is dated as you'd think it would be, but there was some fun stuff in there, including this first one by Christopher Durang. This is uh, a piece of laughing wild woman in her 30s. Oh, it's all such a mess. Look at this mess. My hair is a mess. My clothes are a mess. I want to talk to you about life. It's just too difficult to be alive, isn't it? And to try to function? There are all these people to deal with. I tried to buy a can of tuna fish in the supermarket, and there was this person standing right in front of where I wanted to reach, out to get the tuna fish. And I waited a while to see if they'd move, and they didn't. They were looking at tuna fish too, but they were taking a real long time on it, reading the ingredients on each can like they were a book, a pretty boring book if you ask me, but nobody has. So I waited a long while, and they didn't move. And I couldn't get to the tuna fish cans, and I thought about asking them to move. But then they seemed so stupid not to have sensed that I needed to get by them that I had this awful fear it would do no good, no good at all to ask them. They'd probably say something like, we'll move when we're goddamn ready, you nagging bitch. And then what would I do? And so then I started to cry out of frustration quietly so as not to disturb anyone and still even though I was softly sobbing, this stupid person didn't grasp that I needed to get by them to reach the goddamn tuna fish. People are so insensitive. I just hate them. And so I reached over with my fist and I brought it down real hard on his head and I screamed, would you kindly move, asshole? And the person fell to the ground and looked really startled. And some child nearby started to cry and I was still crying. And I couldn't imagine making use of the tuna fish now anyway. And so I shouted at the child to stop crying. I mean, it was drawing too much attention to me. And I ran out of the supermarket and I thought, I'll take a taxi to the Metropolitan Museum of Art. I need to be surrounded with culture right now, not tuna. All right, this one is from Faith by Israel Horovitz. This is Agatha. She is a wealthy divorcee, recalling the night Bobby Kennedy was shot. Of course he married her before she died. You think he married her after she died? You're always a bit slow in the uptake, Ted, but old sister time has slowed you right down to a fucking crawl, hasn't she? Can you believe it? I had a huge thing with this one. A huge thing. Ha! <laughs> Drugs. <laughs> I can remember going to this party with you, Ted, up near City College, somewhere in some filthy, dreadful hovel, milk crates for furniture, early Che Guevara design. It was positively scrofulous. Our host with this hippy dippy yippy with his hair out to there, scrawny. It's weird I can't remember his name because I think I actually went out with him a couple of times. Anyway, you and I, Ted, were very, very, very fucking mellow because we had smoked bananas or God knows what and then sniffed yellow paint and snorted Rice Krispies or some such. Anyway, if you can believe this, 
Faithy, this one, I got incredibly horny. I mean, incredibly horny. And we started doing it. Dozens of hippy dippies around, smoking, drinking, dancing, TV blaring in the middle of the room because of the elections. Ted and I really and truly into it. And all of a sudden there's this screaming and yelling and the whole thing turns. I mean, turns. Bobby Kennedy has been shot. Ugh, talk about bad sex. Thank you, guys.